you should be surprised, heartbroken, angry. It's just like uh, any other case where a pastor takes a public position that is contrary to good biblical sense. Luke chapter one makes it very clear. This is the occasion where Mary greets Elizabeth and the baby inside of Elizabeth, John the Baptist, in the second trimester leaps with joy because he is in the presence of the Lord. Remember that John the Baptist was a fetus and Jesus was an embryo because he had just been conceived. Nevertheless, he was in the presence of the Lord Jesus. So they were both themselves even when they were in the womb. Now, I don't know what could be more clear from Luke chapter one than that destroying either John the Baptist or Jesus through abortion in that case would have killed them and therefore would have killed a valuable human being made in the image of God. I don't know what the possible rationale could be for those pastors to be in support of, of this amendment. It, it stuns me. With the other pastors, you, you can't control ultimately, you can try to affect, but you can't control ultimately what the laws are going to be passed. In this case, I think a state constitutional amendment, which happened in Ohio recently too. Yes. And uh, so th what that does is make, make abortion legal like it was with Roe v. Wade, but now on a state by state basis. So in that state, you're just back to the beginning. All that means is abortion is available. It's legal. It doesn't mean that women are going to get the abortions. We can still have an impact on the women who make choices. And this is where um, abortion clinic counseling, sidewalk counseling has been done very effectively in many cases. You can't stop everybody, obviously, but um, you can make a difference with the right approach, the right kind of communication. With a pastor, it's entirely different. This, to me, is unconscionable. This is like a pastor who's in favor of slavery. You know, chattel slavery that we had here in the States, um, in the past, it's, it's, a, it's a blight on our history. And this would be a blight on them to do this. Because keep in mind, with chattel slavery, human beings were enslaved and were used as property. In abortion, human beings are summarily executed. Why? For largely for convenience factors of one sort or another. I can't afford this baby now, they think. I can't. It's my career is in question. Um, if somebody found out that I had this baby, that would be bad news or whatever. But none of these are the kinds of things, even as weighty as some of these concerns happen to be, none of these are the kinds of things that we would think would justify killing a two-year-old. And if it wouldn't cut justify killing a two-year-old or a one-year-old or a one-day-old, how does it justify killing that same individual just moved a few inches away inside a mother's womb. It doesn't. And frankly, I don't understand why pastors would be in, fa in favor of this. It's bad enough that they, that they would kind of cast a blind eye to it. But to be in favor of it? To champion it? Under what rationale? Before the Jesus of Nazareth. Can they possibly argue that way?